This picture saved my life. On a beautiful morning, I walked into the ocean together with my boyfriend. We were on a small, nearly uninhabited island off the coast of Malaysia. And we walked just knee deep into the ocean. And we were talking and we were pointing at the moon that was still visible in the blue morning sky, talking, kissing, splashing water. And then suddenly, I didn't feel anything below my feet. Suddenly, the beach was miles away. In just a few seconds, a strong undertow had pulled us behind the surf. I tried to swim back, but it was just impossible. My boyfriend managed a little better and he tried to drag me along, but the current was just too strong. And I told him to go alone, to, to get help. But he shouted over the roar of the waves, I won't go without you. And I shouted back, that's very romantic, but then we're both going to die. So he swam back and it went slowly, very, very slowly. And at the same time, I was pulled under the waves. I was thrown around under water, spun around like a cat in a washing machine, and then suddenly yanked up again. Head up was the only thing I could think. Head up and breathe. But I was smashed down on the water, pulled down again, thrown around again, yanked up again, and it went on and on and on. Time disappeared, pulled down, yanked up, head up. And then I saw the moon. And believe it or not, <laughs> but at that time of great existential turmoil, I thought about this picture. It was taken in 1968 by the crew of the Apollo 8. The astronauts were going to the moon to find a place where a future mission might safely land. Their eyes and the eyes of the entire world were focused on the moon. Would people ever walk around there? Would it be possible to land? And these astronauts in their capsule circled the moon. They tried to map its surface. And then when they emerged from the dark side of the moon, they saw it. They saw something no human had ever seen before. So blue, so vulnerable, so sovereign. A blue pearl against an immense black nothingness. Just a wafer-thin layer protecting it from the brutality of the universe. The astronauts had set out to map the moon, but they discovered the Earth. And the picture they took would become known as Earthrise. After that, later on, the astronauts recounted that at first sight they were overwhelmed by an intense feeling of connectedness. It was the distance itself that felt that made them feel connected with the planet and everything that lived on it. The scientific term for this experience is the overview effect. Great distance that doesn't separate, but connects. And as a kid, when I saw this picture, I instantly wanted to become an astronaut. That didn't happen. But years later, in the waves, I did experience the overview effect. Seeing the moon in the sky, seeing the shore in the distance, made me feel connected with everything around me made me feel connected with the present, with the past, with this childhood memory of Earthrise. The distance saved my life. It made me calm. If I had been focusing on what was nearby, I definitely would have panicked. If I, if I had focused on the waves and on the salt water in my, in my mouth, I definitely would have been overwhelmed by fear. But the distance saved my life. 
and of course the two men my boyfriend had warned and who braved the waves with their bodyboards to get me out of the water. I think this experience changed the way I looked at the world, as it did with the astronauts. I still feel deeply connected with the planet and everything that lives on it. I feel connected with people far away, for instance in Malaysia, people who have been among the first to suffer from climate change. And feeling connected with them helped me to stop flying and find less polluting ways to go on a holiday. But feeling connected to the world also made me feel connected to people living far away in time. Future generations that haven't even been born yet. yet. And it dawned on me that I live in a democracy, but there is this huge group of people who don't have a voice. A huge group of people who, do, who are not represented at all. Countless future generations will be affected by the choices we make today, but we act as if they don't have any rights, as if people, or other species for that matter, don't count just because they live far away in the future. What if we gave future generations a voice? This question made me set out to discover how we can make our democracy's future inclusive. And that proved to be pretty difficult, because, especially in the global north, societies are completely obsessed with the here and now. Our economies are driven by quarterly figures, people are working with weekly targets, fashion season only lasts one week, Fame lasts as long as a viral TikTok video, and I think the news cycle lasts as long as, well, refreshing a web page. These days, I often still feel as if I'm drowning, but not from a wave of water, but by a wave, this constant wave of emails, messages, notifications, deadlines, appointments. Raise your hand if you recognize this. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> okay. I think we are being swallowed by the present, and that's dangerous. That's dangerous because, as an individual, that makes us drown in depression or burnout. But it also makes us drown as a society, as democracies. Take, for example, the Netherlands. Forty years ago, as a country with a strong agricultural sector, we already had a shitload of problems. And I literally mean a shitload of problems. Because we had a huge surplus of manure. That is fancy for shit, just telling you. And it was clear that something had to be done to prevent a crisis in the future. But the government was afraid that intervening in the agricultural sector would harm economic growth in the short term. So the government chose to focus on what was nearby instead of on what was in the distant future. And that proved to be as dangerous as panicking in the waves. Because now, 40 years later, our country is in the middle of a massive nitrogen crisis. The soil is depleted, the air is polluted, countless animals and, and other species have disappeared. Farmers live in immense uncertainty. The construction of houses and roads is being halted because of nitrogen standards. And citizens, because of all this, they just gave up on their government. They don't trust their politicians anymore. And this is not very specific for the Netherlands. We see this in, in democracies all over the world. Politicians need to be re-elected every four or five years. And therefore, difficult long-term decisions are being pushed forward. Short-term political interests are prioritized over long-term collective interests. And that's something we see in global issues as well. 
despite warnings from reputable economists for years about the problems in the financial sector, nothing was done and we headed towards a global financial crisis. Despite warnings from the World Health Organization, countries didn't prepare for a pandemic and so COVID-19 turned into a global health crisis. Despite warnings from ecologists and uh, indigenous people, far too little was done to prevent species from going extinct. And now we face a biodiversity crisis. And of course, despite decades of warnings from scientists, we still burn fossil fuels like there is no tomorrow. And we are turning climate change into a climate crisis. I think citizens can change all this. I think citizens are crucial to come up with a future inclusive democracy. Citizens can help politicians to make those future inclusive decisions. And it might sound utopian, but it's already happening in some places. For instance, by means of citizens' assemblies, a group of everyday people, about a hundred people, a cross-section of society that deliberates and decides on long-term difficult societal problems. For instance, in France, where a citizens' assembly formulated socially just measures to tackle climate change, as did a citizens' assembly in the UK and in, in Scotland, in uh, Denmark, Spain, Luxembourg, in cities all around the world, citizens helped their government to tackle COVID-19 through citizens' assemblies. In other cities, citizens helped their politicians to overcome budget uh, deficits. And recently, in Ireland, a citizens' assembly helped the government to tackle biodiversity loss. Within just a few months, Citizens' assemblies come up with feasible solutions that do include the future. And how do they do that? They do that by creating distance. Citizens in the citizens' assembly, they take a step back from the turmoil surrounding a topic. They circle around this topic like a capsule circling the earth. They create their own overview effect. They create this effect by looking at a topic from very different perspectives. Perspectives from other assembly members, perspective from experts, perspectives from future generations. And by creating this overview, they enable themselves to really look far beyond political and cultural differences, to look far beyond their own interest, to look far beyond their own generation. Recently, I was attending one of uh, such assemblies in the city of Leiden, where citizens were invited to discuss how housing should look like in 2060. Did these people have a crystal ball that showed them what technology in 2060 looked like or how housing would look like in 2060? No. They had something much more powerful. They had this. These. These help them to put themselves in the shoes of future generations, to understand what people in 2060 would need. Water to drink, air to breathe, friends and family to cherish, a sense of security, a sense of belonging to the world. Earthrise helped us to look at our planet from a distance, from outside. 
Today can be the day that we start to look at ourselves from the future. And how you can do that? It's very easy. Just put a pair of children's shoes on your desk. And they will start a conversation about the future with just about anyone who walks by. I can tell you, these are real conversation starters. If you want to take a step further, talk to politicians about citizens' assemblies. And you don't have to do that by yourself. There are, in many countries, including in the Netherlands, citizen-led movements that are already advocating for citizens' assemblies. Join such a movement. Help us to give future generations a voice. It will help you to keep your head above water in the raging now. It will give you perspective. And it might even save your life. <laughs>